Welcome to our talk, the place where we agree to disagree if we disagree at all. Today, my uh, guest is Ruth Karina Kjölner, originally from Norway. Now she is in South Carolina. Our topic is awe, awe as in awe inspired. Welcome, Ruth Karina. How are you? Hi, Rene. I am doing great this morning. <laughs> Good. It's morning time where you are. It's evening time here. The sun yeah. is setting behind the snowy mountains here in Switzerland. Um, and it's uh, Christmas time soon, uh, even though we may show this to the viewers, uh, I don't know, in January, February, but we are filming it around Christmas. So Merry Christmas to you. Thank you. Thank you, René. Merry Christmas to you and Misha. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, and that shows already our viewers. We've known each other for a while. Not very closely, I must say, because uh, our careers sort of uh, overlapped. Um, uh, Ruth Karina today is the president of the Reiki Network, an international Reiki association. Um, we will come back to that in a moment. But my wife and I, Misha and I, we've been a member of the same association and therefore we have known each other. So I'm very pleased to speak about awe. And I'm curious to learn from you, Ruth Karina, what you believe that awe is. Um, before I do so, let me quickly introduce you a little bit to uh, my viewers. As I said, uh, Ruth Karina is originally from Norway. Um, today she is in South Carolina and together with her partner, Swami Jankirti, she is running a center for health, growth and transformation. She started out as a school teacher, later volunteered at Krishnamurti's Oak Grove School in California while writing her thesis. She eventually became a Reiki practitioner in 1995 and in, in the meantime, a Reiki master teacher and has been president of the Reiki network, as I mentioned, since 2016. Is that about it, Ruth Karina, or have I forgotten something vital? Would you like to add something? No, I think this, uh, this sums up uh, pretty good. Uh, well, I have also been running the Meditar Center in Norway for 20 years. That has and, been a big part of my life. And this is now closed or what's the status of the center in uh, Norway? Oh, no, the, the center in Norway is still open. It is another person being there running it now. Ah, I see. Yeah. I wasn't sure because of uh, the changes uh, COVID has put upon so many of us. Uh, um, that's the background of my question. Well, you know, I was wondering how we got to the name of all for us today. And I remember last time when we spoke a week ago, we had a number of topics and basically dear viewers, when I speak to a person, I listen to them and uh, I basically listen to the words they're using. And uh, Ruth Karina has used the word awe as in awe inspired. And uh, I thought, I suggest, and you uh, immediately jumped on it. What's your fascination about awe and what exactly do you mean by awe? Well, my fascination by awe is the experience that awe gives us. I think for me, awe is without words. You can say, you can watch a beautiful, beautiful sunset and you can say, wow. And uh, to me, wow is maybe an expression of awe, but I think the feeling of awe is even deeper. It has no words. It's just a knowing that an experience that is so grand, so to speak, that we can't really put words to it. 
Yeah, I agree with you. I think, uh, uh, but we are often, we, humanity, <laughs> are often when we are experiencing love, when we're experiencing many things, we often tend to say, oh, it's difficult to put words behind, uh, words behind it. And that's true. And words will never truly uh, reflect the complexity and the entirety of what we mean. And yet here we are in a talk show, so we'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, you know, I looked up, uh, and actually you have already used some of these expressions in the dictionary, what all means. And here are some uh, samples. I've always held musicians in awe. So the, here awe stands for admiration. As children, we were in awe of our grandfather. And surely there is probably the element of admiration, but also already the element of almost fear uh, of the authority of the grandfather. Or uh, here we were awed by the beauty of the mountains. And that's very much where what you just said, that we cannot put words behind this stunning, uh, all-encompassing experience when we are awed by, by nature, by the mountains. So uh, would, you, would you associate with these three sentences I've picked out? Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, after we um, decided on the topic, I've been thinking about what kind of awe experiences have I had in my life that I can really, you know, Tell us. Connect with that. And, um, you know, a baby that's being born. Uh, I remember my friend, she had just become a grandmother. It was her first grandchild. And she was, uh, and we were babysitting this little boy. And she was so afraid of uh, doing anything wrong you know <laughs> and i was like i was used to kids so i wasn't afraid but i respected her um way of approaching the baby so what we ended up doing was just looking into the eyes of this little baby that was just a few weeks old and looking into the eyes of a newborn baby to me is awe it's so much wisdom it is so much depth and it's no words it's just communication on a deeper uh, deeper level you know they're saying when you do that you can see straight into the soul yeah. of the being which is incarnated mm -hmm. uh, which makes me sometimes wonder what happens when i look into the eyes of a grown-up today and i can see how how they're masked how they're shielded how they're holding on to uh, maybe an image they want to project. Uh, but but uh, when you spoke, it reminded me of that saying that actually the eyes are the gate to the soul. And particularly when you look at uh, through the eyes of, do you see in this experience, do you see the depth of soul in my words now, also of yourself in a moment like that, which you just described? Was that experience also not just looking out into the eyes of the baby on the outside, but what you experienced that this was a reflection on what, what you experience or who you are in the inside? Well, I think uh, when in that moment, I didn't think of me, but I think the feeling was from the heart. I think the heart is communicating uh, the love, the wonder, the, yeah, communicating with a soul is quite special. <laughs> it's and one that is so pure as a little baby, you know, that is just a beautiful, beautiful, and to have the awareness of that moment. I think that's and why I think this topic is so um, great because we kind of forget about these moments in the daily business mm -hmm. of life. And now, to see that there are many all moments 
during a day if you open up for it. I agree with you and I'm sure we'll come to that, but I want to stay for a moment longer with that experience because it reminded me some, of something. You and I, we are both uh, parents and you described the situation where you looked into the eyes of a baby of another parent, of another mother, right? Mm -hmm. um, I recently spoke to a woman about um, motherhood and one of the eternal questions when you are a parent yourself and when you meet people who don't have children very often is, do they really understand what it means to have children? And so my question to you, to you Ruth Karina, is do you believe that you would have been able to have that experience of awe when you looked into that child's, who wasn't your child, uh, eyes, the same way if you hadn't, if you hadn't been a mother yourself, if you had been a childless woman? Do you understand my question? Yeah, and that's very funny that you're asking me this question because I don't have any biological children. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> but I have, uh, uh, you know, my, uh, my partner's children and my sisters and brother children. And I have a little boy that I have. Uh, I'm his mama Karina and I have other two other African um, uh, young uh, beings, people <laughs> that are my children. I'm their mom. <laughs> so, uh, um, but they have their other biological mom as well. Uh, so I know in my heart that you can love as deeply. I mean, I don't know if it would, would be even more if it was my own, but that little boy that uh, called me mommy, um, to me, he could have been born out of my body. It didn't matter. You know, the love doesn't uh, differentiate. When you have the connection, it's, it's pure. I understand. And um, my heart, as you spoke, said, of course, the, it doesn't make a difference. No, it doesn't. <laughs> um, but, but yet, I do understand the question. And I think we shouldn't take the question per se lightly. But that's not the topic of our discussion today. Uh, yet, I think you mentioned it correctly. It is in everyday's life. It is in situations like we discussed, um, a conversation with a person about motherhood or parenthood uh, or or something else uh, out there every day where we have an opportunity to, I was in nature all day yesterday in the mountains mm -hmm. and um, it was just uh, awe-inspiring in, in a sense of, it also showed me not only the beauty and the the love um, but it also showed me to some extent how insignificant i am how how small i am in the universe and that the forces of nature are so <laughs> so much more bigger so i think in the word awe there is also this element uh, of fear of of uh, not just respect but but you know, respect uh, implies that you you know, but when we are in awe, that feeling implies also that there is something beyond what we know. Um, uh, so, and if I look at actually the dictionary again, uh, and if I bring it up, awe, an emotion or a power to inspire dread, fear, uh, veneration, uh, equivalent to admiration, and wonder. So this child, which is just so curious and open, uh, that is inspired by authority or the sacred or the sublime. So in a context with spirituality, of course, this, this experience of awe is a very important one. And I, we spoke about every day, we spoke about children. Can you pick up a little bit 
um, all in context with your take, your personal take of spirituality and the importance of all in context with spirituality? Yeah, you want me to talk about that? Please. Yeah. Uh, well, I was uh, thinking about uh, a moment, uh, you know, we talked about birth, a newborn child, but also about um, death uh, when the body is leaving the body. And uh, I experienced sitting with my mother when she was just about to take her last breaths. And uh, I told her, go towards the light, go towards the light. <laughs> because she was very okay with leaving the body. She was uh, uh, very aware that that was what she was doing. And suddenly I saw her lift her arm up and lift her head up like the veil between this world and the other side was opened and it was a very special moment to see that she was really seeing that she was being met by the other side and uh, I, that was not the death moment so to speak because after that she had a seizure and then everything was still. But I felt so in awe, <laughs> having witnessed that moment of leaving this earthly um, place and going to the other dimension. Uh, and when I came home, I was dancing. I put on some nice music and I was dancing, uh, kind of sending her off to the other side because it was no grief in this at that time. It was just supporting her in her journey to the other side. And um, yeah, so that was uh, that spirit leaving the body. <laughs> this is, thank you so much. And I think if somebody is watching this video, uh, wondering what the hell we are talking about when we say all, I think you, with your recounting that situation, offered an opportunity to sit here and watch the video and be in awe of what you said and of you, of telling the story. So thank you very much. This is, this is really wonderful. Yeah, thank you. And I have one other moment that I would like to share with all. And because I have meditated a lot and done a lot of uh, um, workshops and, uh, you know, a lot of spiritual experiences. And this time I was in a channeling group and we were in an angel store <laughs> where they sell crystals and angels and cards and all that kind of store, uh, things. And it was the 11th, uh, 11, 11 at 11 o'clock. And we were sitting in a circle there. We were just maybe eight people and we were meditating. And suddenly I felt my body or my uh, my whole body rising up it was very i cannot forget this experience i was just going up up and it was energy it wasn't my physical body but i was all the way up at the ceiling <laughs> the feeling of being that big and then suddenly you know the awareness goes oh i'm here in this room and i was down again but that tells us that that's how, how big we are. You know, the body is just, uh, the physical body is not who we are. The spirit is so much bigger. And our potential for what we can do is also a 
amazing. That is all. We can be awestruck by that. <laughs> uh, also in the sense of scared out of my wits, uh, of my own potentiality. Um, I heard you. I smiled a little bit because uh, I saw this esoteric shop. I could smell the incense. I could hear the chimes in the background. And I saw these uh, um, uh, semi-enlightened uh, circle. Um, and I'm making only a little bit fun of um, this situation because uh, as much as I appreciate what you said, um, a neurologist would look at what you just said uh, with with very different eyes. And I'd like to respect the neurologist's view as much as my own experience or your experience um, or the psychologist and, and the psychologist or might even refer to um, our own ego, which uh, plays sometimes tricks in experiences like you just described. Um, and I hope with what I just said, I didn't pay, is that okay for, with you? I didn't mean to belittle your experience in the slightest. I tried to put it into somewhat of relativity to, um, to a broader, uh, broader audience uh, who may not actually deal with angels and things like that. So, but let me first be clear, was that okay with you, Ruth Karina, or did I um, misuse my words, misuse my words? No, I mean, in this world, we are so many people and we all have the freedom to have our perspective on things. And, um, you know, I did say it was in an angel store. <laughs> um, so, of course, then, oh, it becomes a little bit woo-woo for some people and for yeah. other people, it is not. I mean, it wasn't, uh... no, it's okay. I mean, we uh, all good. are different. Good. I could. I can assure you, if you had to be a, a neurosurgeon, uh, I would probably uh, represent the viewpoint of an esoteric person um, uh, who is who is describing a spiritual experience or what they believe to be a spiritual experience. Mm -hmm. um, I too thought about uh, in preparation, what were the moments uh, for me? And um, yes, nature is, is probably the most powerful catalyst for me to, uh, to get into this state, almost a trance state where, where I'm taken by all. But, um, uh, there is something more down to earth which I want. I prepared for you, and I'm, I share. I would like to share with you. Um, you know, when you walk in in big cathedrals, they very often have what they call the rosette, the the glass, the the stained glass or painted glass, mm -hmm. and inside the church it's mostly cool, and outside it might be and dark, and outside it might be sunshine. And these windows, they appear in all their uh, glory and colorful beauty. And um, on a number of occasions, I have, and I'm not a particularly religious person. I was Christian as a Catholic, but I don't belong to the church as such. So when I go to churches, I don't differentiate between Christian, between religions. Um, but uh, particularly in the Catholic big churches, very often I found this awe inspiring um, the beauty of the light coming through these windows. So um, when um, Dr. Justin Stein, I don't know whether you know him, he's a, hist a historian who's done important work also in the Reiki community. Um, uh, and he came to Zurich um, uh, and he, he visited somebody, a, um, a colleague of his uh, in the university there. And I went to see him in Zurich and we went for a walk and I wanted to show him Zurich a little bit. And we went to the uh, women's minster. It's a big cathedral-like church 
Um, and there are some beautiful paintings, window paintings there. And in preparation, I looked it up and I found a news, a news snippet a few years ago when um, they celebrated the 50 years of the windows of Chagall in uh, Zurich. I'd like to show that to you. And here you see the in the background the, um, the church. Yeah. And I will switch off the sound because uh, what the new speaker says is not so relevant for us. Have a look. So here you see the church with the windows. This is Mary with Virgin Mary. And then these are iconographic descriptions of Bible history, the Ten Commandments. And this is in fact, uh, Chagall himself, Mark Chagall himself. Um, it's it this was uh, a very awe inspiring moment when Justin and I went to that uh, church and we looked at those windows I found them very fascinating and I'd like to show you a little more of this film because researching it now uh, I didn't know that in 1970 um, Mark Chagall himself was actually in Zurich giving an art exhibition and he was asked, here he is in Zurich, and he was asked by the priest of the church who had to do renovations, whether he would uh, do the glass windows. And there is another person, an important uh, supporter of art in Switzerland. And here you have a few more impressions of the art. This is the granddaughter of Marc Chagall. And she's talking about the challenges uh, he had and the doubt he had. And, you know, when I heard her speak, uh, this was today when I saw this the first time, when I heard her speak about how much the artist himself, and by then he was a well-established artist, uh, 83 years old, um, and um, he knew that this was his last important big piece of work and he was full of doubt how the people would receive it and in fact um, she is talking about uh, how uh, also he had to ask the rabbi for permission because he is of Jewish descent mm. um, here he, she shows pictures and explains this that the rabbi had the chief rabbi had to give a consent that uh, Mark Chagall was allowed to do this work for a Christian, for a Catholic uh, a a church. And I let it run because here you see him actually working on some of the windows. And I believe just now there will be one or two more impressions of the windows themselves. There you go. And these are supposed to be the uh, most beautiful um, a church painted glass church windows in all of Switzerland. Um, so I was looking forward to sharing this this moment with you uh, because that's the moment where I was just standing there, awe inspired with the light coming through to see the symbolism of the paintings, the history, uh, which at that time when I was there with Justin, I didn't fully comprehend much of it. I uh, got to understand now watching the, the newsreel. So, yeah, uh, I just want to say it reminded me of um, when I was a child going into, we have a very beautiful cathedral in Tunsberg, the town where I grew up. And I remember as a child those windows 
it was some of the most beautiful things <laughs> I was uh, seeing. I mean, and I think th that was all that I experienced. And I was just a small child, but I remember the windows in particular because of the light that came in and how it, it, it just does something to you. Yes. At least it does for me. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad then that I chose this to share with with you. Uh, and uh, I don't think that age is uh, relevant for this mystical, mm -hmm. spiritual experience of awe. Actually, maybe it stands to reason that as children, we were even more open than maybe today when we are so, uh, yeah, so busy with every day's life. Um, we're coming to an end, Ruth Karina. I want to know one more thing from you because you likened awe at one point when you told us the story about the child with love. Um, is to you love and awe one of the same thing or what's the correlation between love and awe? Well, I want to say I, I can't answer that. <laughs> But to me, I think that uh, it's a mystery. I think awe is the mystery of uh, human existence and human potential. Like looking at those windows, you know, the, the creation. What a human being can create. Um, and I think you're right when I, when we create and we are passionate about it, it is love that uh, goes through us into that creation that creates again the awe moment. So it might be right that awe <laughs> can be seen as the same as love. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Ruth Karina. Bye bye to you. And, and thank you, Renee. It has been a pleasure to be talking with you this morning. <laughs> You're very kind. Thank you. I'll see you around. And dear viewers, I thank you very much for having watched another episode of Our Talk. I hope you liked it. I hope you will subscribe and see you in three weeks time.